Thornbridge Manor, the Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now, the target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. Oh, by the way, now I told Kate about this text. What did she say? Well, I talked to him that. Thank you. And I was in a bit of to talk about that. Oh, what did I tell you? She's a sensible woman. And that stuff from your ex was like manipulation 101. I know, I know. I guess I, I thought she was going to read into them and freak out. Sam must have done something to provoke her. Shit, yeah. Caroline really did a number on you. Two routes to get inside the house, unseen. You know what we're doing, sir. Don't worry about that. Now, 
Only state I can afford in. Can't miss it, man. I like your poetry, but you're right. It's beautiful. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute. Hey, hey watch this, bro. Hey, watch this. Good discretion. Hey, watch, hey, watch, hey, watch this, bro. She's my, uh, Results she my, uh, and discretion target, are my special. <laughs> Give it up. Let me see your Thank you. Oh. Damn. <laughs> oh. I understand. Discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Don't strangle people, oh, you maniac. Hey, just this, Zero bro. two out. He <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, why they just watching me like put in the in the chokehold? They got because they're like they're like stop. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm play for real, bro. Play discretion. For real. Results for real. and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my... In my experience, a thorough examination... <laughs> That nigga in the stomach with a briefcase. Then I hit that old ass lady. Discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. Great. Your house. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential <laughs> crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madam Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments? Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that a staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual situation. How are you, sir? I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, hey, look Carlyle. at this shit, okay? This, 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 this rich, this rich nigga problem right here. You see, how, you see where this nigga died? He got murdered. 
A locked room murder mystery 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm. A photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. You've likely not exhausted the room for clues, 47. How are you today, sir? So someone should go and see what the oh. hell that was. No problem. Ah, she moved. Man, that bitch is gone, bro. Oh, she above me. They can't even legally have guns. Niggas, they had it. Man, bro. Bro. Yo, yo. That, that, them niggas be shooting slingshots, bro. Bring her ass out here right now with me. Ah, nice. Huh? Yo, yo, what's up, man? Please behave and refrain from throwing garbage in the street, sir. How do we say, man? She got spoilers.
Get back to his lock. I ain't, I ain't gonna do it like that. I ain't gonna do it like that. Yo, yo, what's good, bro? Oh yeah, yeah, I did. I did like three or four times. Huh? You got spoiled. You said webinar? Oh yeah. Oh no, you can do it like a hundred different ways, bro. Hell yeah. You can cut like I, the way I did. I c I'm gonna give you one spot. Like, you can cut the parachute before you, they put them on. Yeah, they, they go to jump, bro. <laughs> Shit, no problem. Man. Yeah, I like I like the missions. Uh, matter of fact. Thornbridge Manor, the Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Car I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carla this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. A famous private investigator summoned... Oh, by the way, I told Kate about this text. What did she say? Well, I thought she'd be mad at me, but she just thanked me. Said she understood the position I was in. Uh, we had a really good talk about it, actually. Oh, what did I tell you? She's a sensible woman. And that stuff from your ex was like manipulation 101. I know, I know. I guess I thought she was going to read into them and freak out. Say I must have done something to provoke her. Shit, man. Caroline really did a number on you. Like, like, like Don't forget like, about Patrick. No good's gonna come of it. Stick to your own mind. You know what we're doing, sir. Don't worry about that. Do some shit right there, you don't be realize it. Oh shit, what are you doing? Hey, what's up, bro? Yeah, 
Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madam Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled... I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madam Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments? Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that a staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the please rather stay unusual back. situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play. The dead body of Zachary Carlyle, Alexa's little brother. I wonder what happened to him, 47. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. A hidden door. It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm, a photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Hey, hey, look, hey, look at this shit, bro. This is all I like about this shit right here, bro. Hey, look how he be off the niggas, bro. Echo 
Nigga, every every game. Eh. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, who's shooting me? Hey, nigga, every game ain't gonna move like last of us, bro. Like, they're making no money the game. Sir. The animation will play a big part in how the game plays. The animation is great for what it is. If you, play, you gotta, you gotta play the game, bro. You can't just go up. This shit, this shit killer. This shit killer horizon. Right? You watching Twitch stream? Fuck that job. Can I do anything for you? Uh, yes, actually. Could you speed up time so I don't die from boredom? Mr. Fernsby, <laughs> I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case. And I will take you to Madame Carla. Uh, yes, actually. Could you speed up time so I don't die from boredom? So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive means an opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? I'll come back later. Have very kind of Hello, sir. Huh? Sup? Aaron Ford Jr. calling from Morgan Yates and Cone. I need to get a listing of asset transfers from the Carlisle account HT. I'm about to try something risky. The depot number 5085. Uh, no, I need it huh? immediately. Yes, I'll hold. What? Why would you knock my? Number five zero eight five. I received a vault token for the Milton Fitzpatrick London Bank. Did I understand correctly that I should give it to Rebecca in case of your death? Exactly. She holds the other one. I want her to have the file on Arthur Edwards if I die. You're not fearful she will be in trouble if she knows. She would. will start digging when she realizes things don't add up, inevitably getting her in trouble. I'd rather she knew who she's up against. She's clever and resourceful. Who knows, maybe she'll be able to hit him where it hurt. But I don't want her to get involved prematurely. Hopefully, she'll never have to get involved at all. That is the door to Rebecca's room.
I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. Can we get back what he stole from me? So far, it looks like we can't. All the transfers of funds and privileges I've been through have been bulletproof. He intercepted the arrangements our office worked years to put in place. That's why Don Yates should be here. He made the arrangements. He should bloody well be the one to clean up this whole mess. I, uh, I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. Don't kill the messenger. Please, continue your efforts, Mr. Ford. This all confirms that Arthur Edwards stole everything from Madame Carlyle. Perhaps you should let her know how bad it is, 47. Stop pacing, for God's Monica, sake, Monica, Emma. Real tears why don't we get any kind of explanation? It's bloody rude, that's what it is. Making us come like, here to play funeral and then show up like nothing. Like, like, <laughs> that door leads to Emma and Gregory's room. Ball, ball guys trash to the front end. Games, games that games games that you plan on games that you listen listen the games that you plan on for for home listen the games that you plan for for home
haven't been in this room yet. Now, this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma up, is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. Yeah. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. A keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Is that all? Not very thorough, are you? No, if you do it about business, like the riddles and the Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger bore. He's better off dead. Anything else you want to pry from my intricate intellect? Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Emma Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around 8 o'clock. Anything else you want to know? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. How do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Is that all? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind, except Perhaps I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. 
I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. So, Madame Carlyle wants a picture taken. If you were to assist with the missing fuse, I'm sure the portrait would be one for the ages. You've got to be kidding me. Don't throw that here. At your age. Not your age. Not This seriously needs to step into this century. It's not safe at all. If this was back home, it would be a lawsuit waiting to happen. Can you just stand up? Uh, can you just stand up, please? Hey, she's single, Rebecca, right? Maybe I should ask her out. Get to know her in a personal way? <laughs> you could try. Rosie told me Rebecca has a really cool saying, though. It takes a damn fine man to replace no man at all. <laughs> so you've got your work cut out for you if you do try. Oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to imply that you're not fine. You're definitely fine. I mean, I, I don't fancy you or anything. You're not my type at all. You could try. Rosie told me Rebecca has a really cool... Wow. Is that those bloody kids messing around again? This keeps happening again and again today. I should have stayed in bed. Man, I have, how much pay this nigga out? You could try. 
Rosie told me Rebecca has a really cool saying, though. It takes a damn fine man. Have you ever heard of knocking? Well, you need to leave. You could try. Rosie told me Rebecca has a really cool. I don't know you. Oh, he's seen me do that shit. All right, I got you. I know what I gotta do. Look at this shit, boy. Look at this shit, boy. Look at the art of deception. Look Rosie told me Rebecca has a really cool saying, though. Oh, watch, watch this. Yeah, this. I will. What's that? Oh, the Resident Evil. Rosie told me Rebecca has a really cool saying, though. It takes a damn yeah. fine man to Wait. replace no man. Wait a minute. I'd really appreciate it if you left. You could try. Rosie told me Rebecca has a really cool saying, though. Wow. Hmm. Eh. What is the What's the weird stuff going on here? Who's Why throwing shit? Here, hmm. Hey! Pick that up! I don't believe for a second that Zachary committed suicide. We'd only just run through his plan for the spring seedling yesterday. Annually plugged in fuses? Do they even exist anymore? How old is this shit? No offense, but please get out of my face. What? Hmm? I'm gonna ask you to pick that up. Again, bro. Rosie told me Rebecca has a really cool saying, though. It takes a hey, who the hold on, hold on, Woody. Rosie told me Rebecca has a oh, really cool saying, man, though. Man. It takes a damn fine man to replace no man at all. <laughs> so you've got your work cut out for you if you do try. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to imply that you're not fine. You're definitely fine. I mean, I, I don't fancy you or anything. You're not my type at all. Oh, Christ, I'll just shut up. Oh, shit. 
shit, I ain't mean to kill him. I ain't mean to kill him, Stout. Stout, I ain't mean to kill him. Rosie told me Rebecca has a really cool saying, though. It takes a damn fine man to replace no man at all. So, you've got no. your work cut out for no. you if you do try. I have a fear! Long time no see. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> On top of everything, Rosie thinks she's in love with young Patrick. I mean, that's a breaking heart happening if I ever saw one. Life can be tough sometimes. Alexa, back from the dead. A make-believe funeral, a murder mystery. Sounds like the power's back up. Why don't you take a picture to test it? It works. I'm you must ready have for the shoot. the port perfect. I'll call the family down now then. Excellent, 47. Madame Carlyle is on her way down for the family photo shoot. Let's see if any memorable moments will play out in front of the camera. Down 
by the fountain. We truly know it. There's no self-awareness anymore, no self-consciousness. She always Hi, good afternoon. Can't let mother get to you like this. You always been mute to her. How do you do it? I'm the youngest. Right ahead. Guess I just flew under the radar when it came to her attention. I don't think so. It's, 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 it's going to go with the knife. Not a what specifically she intends to get. Expanding the Carlisle Empire, though. So thanks. It's just in front of the fountain. It won't hurt you to remember. Hi, good afternoon. I expect you to be efficient. I have a lot to see through today. I'll do my best. Listen, everyone. I understand that you have a lot of questions. Please be patient for a little longer. I will address you in the sitting room afterwards. Right, get in position. Let's get this over with. There's a puddle of water here. Oh, never mind. Let's just get this done, shall we? Chin up, Edward. No one wants to look at that long face. You're such an idiot, Gregory. I'm fine, Rebecca. Fine? You look like a nervous wreck. Stop bickering. Well, Mother, you certainly know how to like... When I took the picture, it's... No. That's Madame Carlyle taken okay. care of. Time to get the file on Arthur Edwards. Command, affirmative. Lagging and tagging. Shit. Oh my god. Are you okay? Oh god, I feel sick. I want to go home now. Okay. Can somebody please help me? I actually, yeah, I should right. let you Later. know. Hello, sir.
Hey, you, please stop throwing stuff around, okay? Let's be mature. Strange. Command, got a possible 517. Moving in to investigate. What? Forget his eyes. They were so swollen. It didn't Hello, even this look is Cassandra like Cox, Zachary. Edward's ex-wife. I've never seen it. I don't know what's going on at your house, but Edward is losing it. Do you think it was a suicide? He seems to believe that Madame Carlyle found the dead. Sure, I got yeah. Yes, I sure I got it too. I fucked that up. Hold on. No, I'm sorry. You're gonna have to leave. That'll do. I just heard something, I don't know. I'm gonna go check it out. All is cool, all is cool. Like Zachary. Hello, this is Cassandra Cox, Edward's ex wife. I don't know what's going on at your house, but Edward is losing it. Hidden behind a portrait <laughs> with a secret mechanism for uncovering. And uh, 
It's got real soul. First time here? Yep. Yeah, it's impressive, all right. A safe in Madame Carla's office. I bet that's where she keeps the file on Arthur Edwards. Peculiar icons above the safe. I wonder if they might be some sort of a code. Maybe have a look around the office, 47. Mission complete. Well done, 47. can't help you now. You need to find Olivia. She will know what to do. <laughs> I wish there had been more time. And then there were none. Thank you, Miss Burnwood. Now, it's my turn. gonna take us all on? 
Verdammt. Tell the Constant to start running! You think you've won? 47 is out there. And 47 never misses his mark. Neither do you, Miss Burnwood. That's what makes you valuable. You're delusional. You think I would betray 47? Trust me. You owe him nothing. What is this? I told you we could help each other. And I meant it. I'll look forward to your call. Gray is gone. Go to Berlin and stay out of sight. For all that's left now. Good afternoon, 47. Your destination is the annual Global Innovation Motor Race in Miami, Florida. After analyzing the data from Reynard's computer, the case is clear. It's one of them, like the one that you do where you gotta like make the car crash. That's like the easy one. For some, like, for some of the other objectives. Welcome to Miami, 47. The innovation race is on its last day, and it is down to the wire. Thousands of eager fans are gathered for the final laps of this unexpectedly close race. Sierra Knox is expertly piloting her red Kronstadt car. Her father, Robert Knox, roams the nearby Expo building where Kronstadt is showcasing its new prototype car. The Kronstadt RK Mark III has seen fierce competition from the Chinese Kowoon Heavy Industries' new racer. Moses Lee, CEO of Kowoon, has taken a dominant lead and looks invincible. Sierra Knox will need to risk it all if she wants to win for the third year in a row. The stakes are as high as they can get.
That is Ted Mendez, one of the country's most influential military-grade moneymen. This must be connected to Kronstadt. Phil, it's Ted here. Just returning your call before heading over to the Expo building to meet Knox for the new combat android presentation. No, not yet. I'm letting him stew a little. The guy's a genius, and you know what they're like. Desperately lacking any discipline or respect for other people. Last time I tried to have a meeting with him, he had me sitting in a room for four hours before canceling. I'll head up when I feel like it. All right, I'll call you after the presentation. Speak then. Ted Mendez, a defense funding consultant with the U.S. military, is scheduled for a private demonstration of a new Kronstadt robotics project. Oh, yeah, I remember this. I remember this. I remember this. Stop that right now. Let's move the body. Hands over your head. Ouch! Ow! Shirt, I forget. I made a mistake. Unhand that cork, sir. Put your hands up. Nice.
Mr. Mendez. Good to see you, sir. Yes, this is just to let you know I've let Mr. Mendez in. He's on his way upstairs now. How are you, sir? Mr. Mendez? Right this way, sir. Hello, sir. Have a lovely day. Uh, hello, HR? Yes, it's Finn Wheeler down at the Bayside Center. Ah, Ted, good to finally see you. Yes, traffic is rough. Not How are you, sir? Let me show you everything. I'm gonna say something provocative now, Ted. War is going out of fashion. It's dirty. It's just plain bad PR. Nobody wants. Picture of uh, that guy because uh, the robot, the robot, uh, it's like it automatically. Hello, sir, Mr. Mendez. See you, man. Oh, here you go, right here, boom. Collecting pictures of celebrity entrepreneurs now 47. Now check it out. Hmm. What are you thinking? Mr. Mendez? Right this way, sir. I know you're about to call the work accident. Oh, uh, hello, HR? Yes, it's Finn Wheeler down at the Bayside Center. Uh, ah, Ted, good to finally see you. I guess traffic was rough. Ah, never mind. Let me show you everything. I'm gonna say something provocative now, Ted. War is going out of fashion. It's dirty, it's just plain bad PR. Nobody wants to exchange their children and loved ones for flags Greetings, and medals anymore. The glory is gone, Ted. But, luckily, Kronstadt has a solution for that. Imagine this. Android infiltrators operating in the field disguised and fully embedded, ready to strike at a moment's notice. Indestructible robotic operators who can infiltrate the deepest sanctuary of any adversary, striking an unseen fatal blow, a surgical tool for a blunt world. Imagine an army of them, fully equipped android medics, seeking out wounded servicemen and injured civilians, bringing them to safety, or patching them up then and there. Android pilots delivering payloads deep inside enemy territory with uncanny precision and minimal collateral damage. All hey, right, how you doing? it's very straightforward. Let me show you. I just pick any of the pictures on the desk, then I use the scanner to upload the biometric data. And Palace will do the rest. Target acquired, WB. Obviously, the final system won't rely on you manually feeding it biometric data. This is still a prototype. This is a pivotal moment in modern conflict solution, Ted. Palace is entirely foolproof. All you need is to pick a photo from the table and scan it just like I showed you. It's perfectly safe. Go ahead. Make my day. Target acquired. Robert Knox. Go to hell. 
put Nox down. Now for the heir to the Kronstadt Empire. That's right. Move on, people. stuff anyways. I think some of the team are using it to increase car speed. I heard a few Kronstadt mechanics talking about it the other day. Something about Knox not wanting to use it because she wants to play on her own. Imagine that. Is it that illegal? I don't know. They're not still still the out, so they asked me to put it here. So I just did that. Not touching it again. Sounds like a good idea. I'm here now, ready to meet up with Sierra Knox over at the hotel. Yeah, after the race. I've just got to pick up the documents from my van, but um, I had to knock out a guy and steal his flamingo outfit, and now I can't find my car keys. Yeah, I know it's dumb. I think I lost them in the scuffle, but the real mascot is still over there. If I don't get them, I've got no evidence. Bye-bye money. I don't know. I, I, I need to figure something out. Talk soon. A disgruntled Kronstadt employee has acquired some dirt on Sierra Knox and in Hey, hey, can you do me a favor? Go check if my keys are over there. The guy's crazy and I don't dare go up there. Did you see him? The guy that jumped me and grabbed my outfit?
Close. Have you seen my mascot outfit? Oh, my head is killing me. The race is entering its final lap, 47. but for now I need you to stay still. Wow. Oh man, you're a real lifesaver. Thank you. 47. The race is over. Sierra will be coming off the track any time now.
This book, 100% broke. Uh, that's not looking good. I'm telling you, Miss Knox is going to be pissed. I did the pre-race checkup on her, and, well, let's just say she's got a bad case of intermittent explosive disorder. You're almost there, folks. Almost. <laughs> it's time nice to outfit. Really Willie brings out your eyes. Miss Knox informed me you'd be here. She has to make sure you brought the documents. What? So. You bring the documents? I have the papers right here. Excellent. Huh. Come on in. Have a seat or something. I'll let Miss Knox know you're here. So far, so good, 47. Now, let's yes, see where this Knox meeting has. is headed. There's a guy here wearing a mascot outfit claiming an appointment with him. So, uh, you here for a job application or what? Something like that. Nice. If you don't mind me saying so, your particular choice of attire is maybe a little, I don't know, off? For a job interview, I mean. My suit is at the cleaners. And you couldn't find anything else to wear? Correct. You must lead a very interesting life, my friend. You have no idea. Hey, Flamingo guy. Miss Knox is on her way. Grab a seat somewhere. She'll be here as soon as she can. So enjoy the rest of your time here in wonderful sunny Miami. If you're heading out to grab a bite to eat, don't forget to check out their food stands. Delicious food brought to you by Global Innovation. So, Mr. Hmm. I never did catch your name. Names are for friends. Very well. Straight to the point in all business. Walk with me. Where are we going? Don't worry. What am I gonna do? Kill you in broad daylight. I just want a bit of privacy here. Not about to do sensitive business like this in front of an audience. Good idea. So just to get this straight, you claimed in your email to have somehow found internal reports that show Kronstadt's involvement in the Tungan Valley Massacre. Sounds about right. Let's be clear. You and I are having this meeting because my father doesn't need to know about this. It's just another undesired distraction. 
I don't care if the information you is true or false. You need to back off now. I don't care if it mentions moving money from the Nexus Project into Tungan Valley Damage Control, as you claimed in your correspondence. I do care about protecting my father, which is why you and I are now here. I see. Leave me alone for a few minutes, guys. Sure thing, Miss Knox. Uh, if you need us, just call. We're right around the corner. So here's the deal. You hand over the documents and leave, and that's the end of it. And you will do that now. So here are the two possible outcomes of this meeting. One... You will leave this place and this country for good. Both targets down. Well done, 47. Head for an exit, and we'll speak again soon. Operatives. Panic is spreading, and now we are axing our own? Knox was a traitor. He would have caused incalculable damage. And he won't be the last. This is exactly what the enemy wants. We need to fight the sickness, not the symptom. And I have just the tool for the job. Right. The Burnwood woman. Eric Soders warned you about her, didn't he? The Crusader. I can handle Miss Burnwood. Everyone hates power until you offer them some. And, and you ought to know. ICA speaks the enemy's language. We need them. And once we don't... <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Fact remains, we are shadowboxing. We need to know who we are up against. I was getting to that. His name is Lucas Gray, the late Mr. Cobb's head of security. Cobb was ground zero, first of our operatives to die. It had to be one of his staff, someone with military training and access to the plane. Yeah, grasping at straws. Gray is a mercenary, a veteran of every backwater tragedy you've ever ignored on the five o'clock news. Chechnya, Sierra Leone, the list goes on, but before 89, nothing. No records of any kind. Now, oh, come on. CIA, 
KGB. Plenty of spies went dark. After the curtain was lifted, I cast a very wide net. Lucas Gray simply does not exist. <clears throat> if you're all quite done wetting yourselves with excitement, I couldn't give two shits where he came from. I only want to know one thing. How does he know about us? I swear to God, this hearts and flowers crap. Good afternoon, 47. The wedding ceremony is about to begin with Lang and his daughter arriving shortly by car. It is expected that they will proceed directly to the open area where the groom and priest is waiting, along with all the wedding guests. Guillaume Maison has been on site all day, preparing the wedding details and entertaining guests. I expect he will also attend the ceremony. Doris Lee is en route via helicopter and should be arriving any minute now. My intel suggests she will not be watching the bride and groom exchange vows, but do keep a lookout anyway. We are working within a limited window of opportunity here, 47. We expect the targets to stay for no longer than 15 minutes. Good luck, 47. That is Guillaume Maison, the Kingfisher, former Interpol agent and the owner of the mansion and its... That's Maison taken care of. Nice work, 47. 47, they're beginning to suspect something. Forty-seven, code red. Everyone is evacuating. Dorian Lang is confirmed killed. Attention 47, Doris Lee is heading for an exit. Confirmed killed.
Good work, 47. That is Captain Ree Thack, a.k.a. 47. The situation is about to get out of hand. 47, code red. Everyone is evacuating. Forty-seven, the blade is on the move. I think he's running for the hostages. Don't let him get to Ladong. Jin Nu has his blade out, Forty-seven. He's about to kill... Forty-seven, Dragon Eyes escape. That is Colonel Jin Nu, a.k.a. The Blade. Vicious and fanatical, Colonel Nu has orders to eliminate Ladong in case of an emergency. That is Captain Long Kwai, a.k.a. Dragon Eye, and his nickname after taking a bullet for the Heavenly Leader. 
47, they're beginning to suspect something. 47, targets are evacuating. Secure any remaining primaries now. Spider Lily's on the move, 47. She's heading for an exit. Stop her. That is Captain Long Kwai, a.k.a. Dragon Eye, and his nickname after taking a... 47, you're about to be spotted. That is Colonel Jin... Forty-seven, the targets are leaving the area. You must act now. The Heavenly Guard has been taken care of. I'll get an extraction team to secure the hostages. Excellent work, 47.
boom. Yeah, I'm about to end it now, boom.